The topic for this video is heap. Under this topic, we are going to learn about these things. I'll be explaining these things. That is array representation of binary trees, complete binary tree heap, how to insert and delete in heap, then heap sort. This is one of the important topic. And heapify, this is one of the famous algorithm or a procedure for creating a heap. I'll discuss this one. Then heaps are famous for being used as a priority queue. So we'll learn about priority queues. So these are the subtopics under this heap topic, right? And if you know all these things, then you can understand heap sort. You can also understand heapify and priority queue. Unless you know these things, so directly jumping on this, it's difficult to understand that. So that's the reason I'm covering all these things. So if you already know a few things, you can skip and go to that topic, right? Any particular topic. Now, before I start, I have to say something. See, I have two courses in Udemy. One is for C++, second one is for data structures. Both the courses are for beginner level as well as advanced level. Means if you already know data structure and C++, you have a lot of things to learn there. And also if you are a beginner, if you have never done any programming, then you can take up C++ course and start learning programming. And both the courses are suitable for academics as well as for interviews. So C++ programming, one course is there. That is from beginners to advanced level. You can learn up to the level of interview. You can crack any interview. Then data structure course using C and C++ and some algorithms are there. It's not complete algorithm. It's just a data structure using C and C++, right? And few algorithms are there. So that subject is for academics as well as for cracking job interviews or coding interviews, right? So I have covered all the topics in greater detail. So that will definitely improve your skills so you can buy those two courses those are paid courses those are not free and don't please don't ask for free coupons the link for those courses is given in the description you can check the description and there is a discount code is there discount coupon code is there that is around 10 or 11 dollar so you can click and go to udemy and if more discounts are applicable udemy, udemy will give you that discount don't worry about that if still it can be reduced it will reduce it so i suggest you take this course and by clicking on this link you go there so let us start with the topic first i will discuss about representation of a binary tree using array so here i have some examples this is a binary tree i have taken alphabets here so that easy to read this is a binary tree and if i have to store it in an array this is an array I already have taken in C, C++ programming, array starts from index 0, but here I have taken from 1 onwards. So this is just a theoretical on paper. When you want to program, write a program, then you can start from index 0 also. But usually this is studied by taking index 1 onwards. So I have taken index 1. Then these elements are stored here. So how they are stored? See, for storing a binary tree, we have to take care of two things. One is we have to store all the elements. Second is the relationship between them. Who is a parent? Who is a child? Who is left child? Who is right child? So these are the things that we have to take care. So elements and the relationship between the elements. So how they are preserved? Watch here. See the elements are stored here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So actually they are filled level by level. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yes, they are filled level by level. Then where is the relationship? The relationship between them is formed by these formulas. So what are these? Let us look at. See if any node is at index i, then its left child is at index 2 into i, right child is 2i plus 1, and its parent will be i by 2 floor value. So let us look into this example and observe really these formulas are used here or not. Let us check. B. B is at index 2. Who is the left child of B? D. So where it should be? 2 into i. So 2 into 2, 4. Yes, it is at 4. Then E is right child. Where it should be? 2 into i plus 1. 2 into 2 plus 1. That is 5. So check on 5. Yes. Then C. C is at index 3. Then its left child F. So 2, 3, 6. So it should be 6. Yes. Then a G is the right child. It should be 2 into i plus 1. 2 into 3 plus 1. 7. Yes, it is at 7. So yes, these are followed. Now one more thing. F. Who is the parent of F? This is 6. 6 by 2 is a 3. Go to 3. Yes, C is the parent. So you check here. 
in the tree. Then for 7, this one, G, who is the parent? C, 7, 7 by 2, 7 by 2 is 3.5, but we have to take floor value means just 3. So go to index 3. Yes, C is there. So this gives the parent. So now we learn that actually these elements are stored by following the formula. Now every time you do, can't use the formula and put them, right? So instead of using the formula, one thing we do is we fill them level by level. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's it. So these formulas are automatically followed. Now let us look at another example. Here, I don't have these nodes. Okay, no problem. Fill them level by level. A, B, C, D, E. Three ends here. So A, B, C, D, E. So if you apply those formulas, you check by yourself, they are followed, right? Left child, right child and parent formulas are followed automatically. Now let us look at this one. A, B, C, then D, no. When I am filling level by level without using the formula and I want the formulas to be followed automatically, then I should fill level by level. And if any element is missing, I should leave a gap there. Yes, this is the important point. Now, actually, B should have its left child, which is not there, right child, which is not there. So put a blank there. Yes, A, B, C, blank, blank, D, E, A, B, C, blank, blank, D, E. This is how they are filled. Now, if you see D, who is a parent of D? 6 by 2, this one, 6 by 2, 3, yes. 3, who is there at a 3? C is there. If I don't write D there, if I write here, then it becomes a left child of B. That will be wrong. So it means left child is not there for B. So this place must be blank and D should be filled here. So without following formulas, if you want to fill them, then make sure that if there are missing nodes, you leave a blank there. So that's all about array representation of binary tree that is done using these formulas. These formulas are for maintaining relationship and the elements are as it is stored in an array. Now next we will understand what is complete binary tree. Now let us learn what is full binary tree and what is complete binary tree. So first full binary tree. See this binary tree, this we have already seen it. So this is a full binary tree. What does it mean by full? See the height of a binary tree, this is 0, 1, 2. So the height is 2, 0, 1, 2. Height of a binary tree is 2. And in that height, it is having maximum number of nodes. If you want to add any node, then the height will increase. And if you remove any node, then this is missing. It's not having all possible node. One more node is possible. So you can take this. So now this is having full in height 2. Now this is in height 3, this is full binary tree. There is no space for any new node. So that tree is called as a full binary tree. And if the height of a binary tree is h, then a full binary tree can have 2 power h plus 1 minus 1 number of nodes, maximum these many nodes. So a binary tree with maximum number of nodes is a full binary tree. Now what is complete binary tree? Let us learn this now. See, look at this one. When I have represented this in an array, then from last first element to the last element, there is no missing element. So this is complete. If you look at this, if you check the first and the last element, there is no missing element. It's a complete binary tree. Here, from the first element to the last element, if you check in an array, there are some missing elements. So even if there is a single missing element, it is not a complete binary tree. This is not a complete binary tree, right? So the definition is, my definition is, if you represent a binary tree in an array, then there should not be any empty locations or gaps in between the elements. Means from first element to last element, in between anywhere, right? After the last element space is there, then we, there is no problem. Like suppose this array is having only five elements. If I have one more six location, that's not a problem, right? But in between the elements, that is the important thing. Now, if you look at this, now you tell me whether it is complete or not. Yes, it is full as well as complete. So every full binary tree is also complete binary tree. Now check this, is it complete or not? Check level by level. One node is there, two nodes are there, one, two, three, four nodes are there, then this next, next, next. Yes, it is 
complete binary tree. If I remove this node, then it's not a complete binary tree. This is missing. This is missing. So no node must be missing. If I remove this, then this is not a complete binary tree. So this is missing. So if you go level by level, there should not be any missing. One, then in this level two nodes, this level four nodes, yes, all are there. Last level, all nodes are not there. All nodes are not there, no problem. If all nodes are there, then it's a full binary tree, right? So one more definition of complete binary tree. This mostly you find in the textbooks. See, a complete binary tree is a full binary tree up to height h minus one. If you hide this and see, it's a full binary tree. And in the last level, the elements are filled from left to right. This is one of the definition you'll find in the textbooks. A complete binary tree of height h, height h is already a full binary tree up to height h minus one. Last level, the elements are filled from left to right. That same thing, I am saying that if you represent this in an array, you will not get gaps like this. If you are getting gaps, it's not a complete binary. Without gaps, it's a complete binary. Now, one more important thing. See the definition of complete binary, what I gave you, sometimes or some authors, some people call this as almost complete binary also. Okay. But in most of the textbooks, you will find this as complete binary. So I am calling it as complete binary. Now I will draw a few trees and show you which one is complete, which one is not complete, so that you get comfortable with complete binary trees. So I'll remove this and I will show few binary trees. Look at this. Is it a complete binary tree? Check level by level. First level one node, then two nodes, then four nodes. All four are not there. If you start from left side, then one, two. No node is missing. So it's a complete binary tree. Check this one. Root is one. Then next level two nodes. Next level four are there. All four are not there, but left hand side, the extreme left side is there. So yes, it's a complete binary tree. Root is one, then two, this level two. Then next level, all nodes are not there. But first, which node must be there? Actually, it should have this node, then this node, then this is allowed. So these two are missing. So it's not a complete binary tree. Now this one, first level one. The next two nodes okay next level all nodes are not there but first of all we should have this node then this node then this node then we can have this so we should have the nodes from left to right but the three nodes are missing there it's not a complete binary so if you represent this in an array let us say this is one two three and this is four then one two three gap gap and a gap and then four so you'll get three blank spaces in between the elements so it's not a complete binary what about this? Let us check. First level one, next level two nodes, next level four nodes must be there. One, two, three, four. These are missing. So it's not a complete binary. What about this? This is there, right? Two nodes, then four must be there. One, two, this is missing. So it's not a complete binary. This one, one, then here two nodes, then here one, two, three, four nodes. Okay. Then last level, all nodes are not there, but we have this extreme left. Yes. This is the end point. After this nodes are not there, that is not a problem. This is a complete binary. Now you are comfortable with what is complete binary tree. And one last point of a complete binary tree is that the height of a complete binary tree will be minimum only. That is log n height of a complete binary tree will always be log n because unnecessary we are not going to the next level unless one of the level is filled. Unless this is filled, we will not go to next level. See, unless this is filled, we will not go to this level. It's not a complete binary tree if you are going to next level. So always the height of a complete binary tree will be minimum. That is log n. This is the interesting fact of a complete binary tree. Now next we will learn about heap. Let us learn heap. See for that I have example binary trees here. This binary tree is a full as well as it's a complete binary tree. Yes, the important thing is complete binary. Tree. This is also complete. This also complete. Now, first of all, heap is a complete binary tree. Then next condition. See the condition. Let us look at the elements 50. Then 30 and 20 are smaller than 50. Yes. 15 and 10 are smaller than 30 and 8 and 16 are smaller than 20. So it means every parent is having the value greater than all its descendants. 
every node is having the value greater than all its descendants. So root will have the largest value that is maximum value. So yes, if the elements are arranged like this, then it is called as max heap. So I repeat, max heap is a complete binary tree satisfying the condition that every node is having the element greater than all its descendants, greater than or equal to also all its descendants. So duplicates are allowed here. So if you have duplicates, you can have them in descendants. Coming to this one. Here, this is 10. 30 and 20 are the children that are greater. And this 35 and 40 are greater than 30 and also 10. So 32 and 25 are greater than 20 and also in turn they are greater than 10 also. So here the smallest element is there in the root. So every node is having the element smaller than all its descendants or smaller than or equal to all its descendants. So this is called as min heap. So again I repeat min heap is a complete binary tree satisfying the condition that every node is having the element smaller than or equal to all its descendants. So there are two types of heap max heap and min heap. So whatever we have to study, we'll study upon one heap and same thing applies on the next heap also. So we will take max heap and study this one. So we will learn how to insert and delete the element. So first let us look at insert operation in a max heap. I'll show you insert operation in max heap. Let us understand how insertion is done. So already I have a max heap here. This is a diagrammatic representation of a heap that is complete binary tree. And that is, this is the array representation of same thing. This is stored in an array. If you check root 50, then this is 30, 20, 30, 20, 15, 10, 8, 16, 15, 10, 8, 16. There are no gaps in between the elements. In between these two, there are no gaps. So it's a complete binary tree. So it's perfect. Let us insert. I want to insert a element 60. So let us insert 60. So I want to insert the 60 in this max heap. So let us see. See where the 60 should come. Root should have the largest element. So 60 should come in root. Yes. Now what usually people think I will talk about that. Then I will show you what is the right method. People think that 60 should be inserted here. Then where 50 should go? 50 should go. Okay, this is 30. That is 20. So this is smaller. Now 50 should go this side. Okay. Then where this 20 should go? 20 should come this side. So in this way, it will extend in this direction. 16 will come here and this will become 20 and this will become 50 and this will become 60. Now, if we do it like this, is it a complete binary tree? No. All these are missing element. Then we have the 16 here. This is wrong. So don't insert it in the root. So I have shown you the wrong procedure or wrong assumption what people will have. This is wrong. It is not inserted in the root. Then how it is inserted? Where it is inserted? Look at this, the correct procedure. See, we actually implement in an array. So that 60 should be inserted here at the last free space in an array. Our heap was ending here, right? It was ending here. Now I have 60 included there at that free space, right? So in diagram, where it will be? 60 will be on the left child of 15. Check it. Where is 15? At 4. 2 fours 8. Yes, it is a left child of 15. So this 60 is inserted here. Inserted here. Yes, it's not a part of heap. I have kept it separately. Now, is it forming a heap? No, that condition is violated. Every node should have the value greater than all its descendant. But you see 60 is there. That is a child of 15. Wrong. Then what to do? Adjust the element. Adjust the element. Make it as a heap or insert it in a heap. How? Compare with the parent. Who is the parent? 60 is greater than 15. So 60 should go up. And again compare with the parent. 60 is greater than 30 also. So it should go up. And 16 is greater than 50 also. So it should go up. So check here in this di in this array representation. 8. 8 by 2. 4. So check with this one. 4 by 2. 2. Check with this one. 2 by 2. 1. Check with this one. So 60 is compared with this one. And its parent. And its parent. So 60 is compared with all its ancestors. And it will reach its right place. So it will swap all these elements. And 60 will go there. So I will draw it here. See. 60 will come here. I will draw a tree first, then I will fill the elements, right? After inserting how it looks like. Now, this is a array. So here, I kept them empty. Just watch it. 60 will go up, 15 will come down. 
and again 60 will go up and 30 will come down 30 will come here then 60 will go up and 50 will come down so we adjust the element like this so 60 comes here so it has moved up in the hierarchy towards the ancestors and it has reached the root because now it is the largest element so in an array if you see 60 was here so 15 went 60 was here so this 15 went there and 60 came here then again 30 went there and 60 came here then 50 went to its place and 60 is inserted here so this is how the heap looks like diagrammatically and also in an array so this is insertion we have inserted only one element in a heap that too we have taken max heap now a little bit analysis how much time it has taken it has taken the time equal to the number of swaps so maximum how many swaps one two three so actually this is depends on the height of a tree so what is the height of a complete binary tree height of a complete binary tree is log n yes so it means the time is big o of log n or order of log n so the time taken for insertion is log n how many swaps are required one two three so that depends on the height log n number of swaps are required and one more thing if suppose this was not 60 if this was 6 then we don't have to swap anything zero swaps so we can say that the time taken for inserting one element in a heap is minimum big o of one and maximum is log n it can be from one constant to log n minimum time is no swapping is required maximum the swapping requires depends on the height so that is log n so this was inserting just one element in existing heap now before going to delete i have something to show you observe one thing see when we are inserting we have to send the element upwards first we add the new element as a leaf then we adjust it by comparing with the ancestors so element moves from leaf towards root so the direction of adjustment is upwards this is the important thing this is the important thing so anyway next i will take the same example then in this one only i will show you how to delete so let us look at delete. now let us look at delete operation on max heap here is a max heap with seven elements that are also there in a array now which element you want to delete see the first and important thing you cannot delete any other element you should not delete any other element but root element so only one element is deleted from the heap without asking or without giving any options or choices only root element is deleted yes if you are deleting root element then only it's a heap see this heap is just like if you have seen in the market uh, at a fruit shop if apples are arranged how they arrange they arrange it like a pyramid heap like so the apples are arranged one above another like forming a pyramid like shape so on the top which apple is kept the best apple the most shiny one among all fresh one is kept on the top so that is the best one so same concept is used in heap also so all these elements are there which is the topmost element best element what is best for us maximum element so that is max heap so 50 is on the top so if you want to remove the apple which apple you'll remove you cannot remove any other apple from that heap you have to remove the topmost apple only that's what so we follow the same method here we will remove only the root element right similarly in min heap also if you say no maximum element is not important for us minimum is important then that you follow min heap okay coming to this let us delete the element so only i can delete 50 50 is gone now again sometime people mistake here the thing that 30 should go up because this is bigger okay 30 will go up then who will come at the place of 30 15 so if 15 goes here 30 goes here then this node is gone if this node is gone is it looking like a complete binary no so if you try to adjust as you like it will not be a complete binary so you have to be careful for preserving complete binary property then what to do so when 50 is gone who should take its place see the last element in complete binary tree this element this element will come in its place that is 16 will come here so 16 is removed from here so 16 is brought here 16 is removed from here this is gone 
So 16 is brought there. 50 is go gone outside. We have deleted that 50. 50 has gone out. We have deleted it. Then in its place, the last element in complete binary. Last element in complete binary means in an array, the last element will take its place. Now, this is how it looks like. So I'll remove this one now. Okay, I'll remove this. This is gone. So you have already seen it. It's here now. Now, this is complete binary tree, but not a max heap. So we have to adjust the elements. Okay, we will adjust the element. That is not a big deal. Maintaining complete binary property is very important. So we preserve that. Now, adjusting the element. So we will adjust. How? From the root towards leaf, we will send it. So let us check how to do this. Compare children of this 16, that is new root, which child is greater? 30 is greater. So 30 will take its place. 16 will come into its place. So I will draw it here. So here, 30 goes here. 20 and 8 remain. 16 comes here and 15 and 10 as it is. So I'll fill them in this array also. 30 is here, 10 and 20. And this is 15 and 10 and 8. This place is free. Last place is free. So how we have done it is, see, the 16 was compared with its children. Who are children of 16, 2 and 3? Left child and right child. Left child and right child. 1 into 2, 1 into 2 plus 1. So 2 into 1 and 2 into 1 plus 1. So if you remember this formula, 2i, 2i plus 1. So this is 2 and this is 3. 2 and 3. These are 20 and 30 are the children we compared and 30 is brought here 16. So now this is one step we have completed. Still we have to check with the descendants. So let us check with the descendant. 16. Who are the children of 16? 15 and 10. Compare them. Which is greater? 15. Now is this 15 greater than 16? No. First of all compare the children and whichever child is greater that you compare with the parent. Okay. Afterwards you compare it. Now, but 16 is greater than both of them. So leave it. It's already there in max heap so this is in max heap you don't have to swap them so this is a delete procedure so i'll just repeat the steps quickly see always in delete we remove root and the last element in complete binary will take the place and we push the element downwards towards leaf and adjust the elements to form a max heap so we have adjusted downwards right so from root towards leaf if you remember in insert the adjustment was done from leaf towards root but now the adjustment is done from root towards leaf so in deletion adjustment is done but the direction is different so in both insert and delete adjustment is done but the directions are different now little bit of analysis how much time it has taken for deleting one element it depends on the height so what is the maximum adjustment you have to do that depends on the height so the maximum time is log n login yes so deletion takes login time now one important thing we understood here is that from the max heap whenever you delete you get the largest element from the heap 50 was largest 50 was gone but now who is largest next largest element is 30 if you delete which will be deleted 30 then from the remaining 20 who will come and sit in the root 20 will come and sit in the root so if you delete next 20 will be deleted yes so from max heap, whenever you delete, you get the next largest element. From min heap, whenever you delete, you get the next minimum element. So you get the smallest, then next smallest, then next smallest, and so on. Now last important thing. This is very important. Listen carefully. Right? See, this is important. Here, the array size was 7. One element is deleted. Now, what is the heap size? 6. Heap is still 6 only from 1 to 6. 7th place in an array is free. That is not a part of heap. Yes. Leave it. No problem. Our heap is still 6 only. That space is vacant after that. So, it's not a problem for us. But, what element we deleted? 50. Where it is? We are using it. But, if you want to maintain that copy of 50, there is a free space here. You keep 50 here. This is interesting. I kept 50 there. Is it a part of heap? No, it's outside heap. Yes. So it's not a part of heap. Just uh, space was free. So I kept it there. That's all. Away from heap. Right. Now, from this six elements, if I delete again, what will be deleted? 30 will be deleted and 8 will come here. Then we adjust. So 20 comes here. 
and 8 goes here then 8 with its child that is 10 so 10 comes here 8 goes there so now the heap reduces to this so the heap size is 5 which element I deleted just now 30 these two places are free already I kept 50 there now 30 keep it here next free place if I do this what happens what happens next element will be 20 next element will be 10 and so on see this was 16 I think yes so it will be so on so what happens you we are getting the elements largest the next largest the next largest the next largest largest so if you read the element from this side they are sorted they are sorted yes this is the idea of heap sort if you have a heap then delete the element and fill it in the empty place obtained after deletion so if you go on filling the elements there then automatically gets sorted so from the heap go on deleting the elements and start filling them in free spaces so this is heap sort so let us take few elements and see the complete heap sort right now heap sort heap sort have two steps first is for a given set of elements create a heap by inserting all the elements one by one then once the heap is formed delete all the elements from the heap one by one the elements will get sorted so I repeat the procedure of heap sort have two steps for a given set of number first of all create a heap then delete all the elements from the heap first step create a heap second step delete all the elements from a heap so I already have some set of elements here in an array these are the elements we have to sort them so I will first show you how to create a heap how the heap will be created inside the array I am also going to show you diagrammatically so let us start suppose these are the set of elements that we have to sort they are not sorted so first of all create a heap so for that initial array these elements are initial array so we assume that in this first element is already in a heap so this is 10 so right now there is only one element in a heap so when you have only one element you can call it as max heap also min heap also it's a heap definitely it's a heap now we will insert second element so second element we will insert that is 10 is already in the heap now we'll be inserting 20 so 10 is already there so 20 we will insert so 10 here 20 here so rest of the elements i am not writing them okay i'll be write one i'll be writing one by one now inserting 20 how to insert already i have shown you compare with the ancestor that is parent and its parent and so on and try to adjust the element check 20 with 10 right so this is greater so 20 should go up and 10 should come down 20 should go up and 10 should come down so here in an array 2 is the index of 20 2 by 2 is 1 compare with the parent 1 so yes 20 will come here 10 will go there right now this is heap so we have a heap of two elements there's a heap of two elements now third element we will include so right now we have 20 and 10 now the new element is the next free space so next free space is this one yes so the element is 15 so we are going to insert 15 now this one earlier we have inserted the element from here right now 15 we are inserting so right now we have 20 and 10 here so 15 is in inserted here now try to adjust it how compare with the parent so who is the parent of 15 3 by 2 is 1 so compare with the parent 15 is a smaller so already it is in the max heap form we don't have to adjust so till here we got a heap now insert the next element 30 so already we have elements 20 10 15 now this is the next free space right 20 10 15 next free space we have 30 so 30 we are going to insert 30 this is complete binary but not some max heap adjust the element compare with the parent and its parent so 30 is greater than 10 and also greater than 20 so 10 will come at the place of 30 yes here it is compared with this one then again it is compared with 20 so 20 comes here and at this place 30 will be inserted so this will modify 10 comes here 20 here and this becomes 30 now this is a heap till here so we have four elements in a heap now the last element 40 I'm going to insert so right now we have 30 20 15 and 10 so 30 20 15 and 10 so the new element that we are inserting is 40 here 
So 40 is inserted at next free space here. So it's a complete binary, but not a max heap. Compare with the parent. Yes, 40 is greater than its parent. 40 is greater than that also. So 40 will move up. So this is the parent. 5 by 2 is 2. Then its parent. So yes, 20 will go at this place. And 30 will go at this place. And 40 comes here. So it means... Sorry. Well, so it means... 20 comes here, 30 comes here, and 40 is here. So this is a max heap. So one by one we have inserted all the elements, and every element was inserted at a next free space, and it was moved upwards, and we got a max heap. Now before going to the next step, let us analyze how much time it has taken. We have inserted n elements, total n elements we have inserted. How much time it takes for inserting an element in a heap depends on the height. What is height of a complete binary tree or a heap? It is log n. So n elements, each element we assume that it is moved up to the root. So it is log n. So the time taken is n log n. So this was the heap creation first step. Now from that heap, I will be going on deleting the elements. So this place, I will show you how the elements are deleted and they are also sorted. So let us delete the elements. Now second step for heap sort. Already we have created a heap. Now the same heap I have taken. This is the heap that we got. Now let us delete the element. So we know very well how to delete the element. So in this let us delete. So which element get deleted? 40 gets deleted. 40 is gone out. Then who will take its place? Last 20. This will take its place. 20 will take its place. So in the diagram I will show. 40 is removed. And 20 will go in its place. 20 will go in its place. So it means this element is gone. This element is gone. Now this is complete binary but not a max heap. So we have to adjust. We have to adjust downwards. So this 20 is gone. Right? 20 is removed. Now 30 and 15. 30 is greater. So 30 will go in the place of 20. And 20 will come here. So this becomes 20. And this becomes 30. Then again compare 20 with 10. So it's perfect. So these are the changes. So now 40 is deleted and we got one free space. Now here I will show, I will add the elements. See we have 30 here and 20 here, 15 and 10. So the elements in the heap are 30, 20, 15 and 10. Heap is till 4 elements only. 40 which was deleted, I will put it here at a free space. That is not a part of heap. Now delete next element. So next element, which element will be deleted? 30 will be deleted. 30 is gone. Who will take its place? Last element in complete binary, 10. So in this array, 30 is gone. So the 10 last element will come here. This element came here. So this is not there. So one more element reduced. We have to adjust this one. Compare with the children, 20 is greater. So 20 moves up and 10 comes down, right? So this becomes 20 and this becomes 10. So this is deleted. I'll remove this arrow. Now, 30 is deleted and this is in a max heap form. Now, next step. Here I will show. We have the elements 20, 10 and 15 and heap is ending here. 40 was already there. We got one more free space. So keep 30 there. The newly deleted element. And in the diagram, this is 20, 10 and 15. Now, still we have to delete three more elements. Now next, delete one more element. Which element get deleted? 20 is deleted. From the array, this is gone. Who will take its place? Last element in complete binary will take its place. 15. So 15 will come here. Last element in the array, that is in the heap. 15 comes here. So this place is free. So this is gone. Now adjust. Already 15 is greatest. So child is smaller. No need to swap the element. It's already perfect. So this is the result. Then next space I will write down. This is 15 and this is 10. So this is 15 and 10. And heap is reduced till here. See there were 3 elements. Now there are only 2 elements. Already I have 40 at the last and 30 at the second last place. One more free space I got. There I can insert 20. So just a store 20. I should not say insert. Just I have stored 20 there. Kept a 20 there. Now these elements are deleted from the heap. These are remaining still in the heap. 
now delete next element which element is deleted 15 is deleted who will take its place last element so it means this is gone so here also 15 is gone 10 will take its place now do you have to adjust you don't have to adjust anything now what will be the result this is 10 so this is 10 now heap ends here now we already have 20 30 and 40 here we got one free space so there you store 15 so that's how the elements are sorted so the heap sort first step if the elements are given then create a heap then second step go on deleting the element and store the element at a free space we are obtaining after deleting the element so finally the elements are sorted so you look at this so you have to observe it because too much board work is there lot of board work is there so you may miss at some place so i suggest you just pause the video and have a look at it complete example is there on board right and do it by yourself once you do it by yourself then you can remember it always how it is working just take a snapshot or copy everything from whiteboard if we do the analysis already creation process we have seen and login creating heap and login now how much time this deleting of all any n element is taking n elements we are deleting and each element takes how much time for deletion also it takes log n time we have already seen it so that is n log n so n log n for creation n log n for deletion so total how much 2 n log n and this is big o of n log n right 2 times of log n is also dependent on n log n so the time is order of n log n or big o of n log n so heap sort takes n log n time so that's it this is heap sort now i have to explain you heapify and heapify is a process of creating a heap already we have created a heap how it is different it's different how it is different we'll see but before that if you remember here we were inserting the element always in the leaf and we were adjusting towards root adjusting towards root it was sent from leaf towards root adjustment was upward now in heapify the direction is different how it is done i'll show you i'll remove this and show you now he next topic is heapify heapify is a procedure for creating a heap so already we saw how to create a heap by inserting elements one by one here also we'll do the same thing but the procedure was inserting an element in the leaf and adjusting upwards now let us see how heapify works so for explaining heapify already i have an array right and if you see it diagrammatically, it is a binary tree and it's a complete binary tree, but it's not a max heap. We want max heap. Now, if we just repeat the procedure of creation, let us look at it quickly. Already we saw in creation process, what we did, we kept 10 as it is, inserted 20, 20 went up, then inserted 15, then inserted 12, then 40, then 25, then 18 one by one we inserted starting from this element so we inserted except this element we inserted 20 15 12 40 25 18 so we started from left to right is it possible if we change the direction can we create a heap let us start from right to left so if we start from right to left then shall we still adjust the element upward no let us do it downward downward how in the deletion if you remember we were adjusting the element by sending it down towards leaf from root so the direction was from top towards leaf that procedure will follow let us follow the procedure now i am explaining heapify watch this first go to element 18 look down there are no children so only a single element don't look at all other nodes just 18 and its descendants there are no descendants so 18 is a heap yes then go to next element 25 25 look downwards it's a heap there is nothing there are no children it's alone it's a heap 40 is a heap next element 40 next element 12 downwards it's a heap now you will understand what does it mean what i was saying just next next element 15 so from here adjust 15 downwards yes children are there compare which is greater 25 so 25 will go up and 15 will come down yes this is the procedure 25 will go up and 15 will come down so 25 will go up and 15 will come in its place this one right 
so if you look only these nodes 25 15 and 18 it's a heap yes only one element i have adjusted now next after 25 this one 20 is there this is over right 15 was there this is over now we are on second element right this one look downwards is it a max heap no adjust this one so compare with the children 40 is greater so 20 will come here 40 will go up right so 40 this will be changed to 20 and this will become 40 so i have just adjusted just two elements now the after second element first element here only this element is not in a heap so adjust it compare with the children 40 is greater so 40 goes up 10 comes here compare with the children 20 is greater so 20 goes up 10 comes here right so this will be swapped with the child so this will become 40 and this is 10 then again swap with the children that is 20 and 10 20 sorry 12 and 20 was there so it will be swapped with 20 and this comes here this is a heap so we adjusted the elements downwards and we started from the last element so we have scanned this array from right to left the procedure we were using in the deletion after deletion we were adjusting the element same procedure we followed and we got the heap created so this procedure is called as heapify right direction is different that's all right and what's the time taken by this one analytically the time taken by this heapify procedure is big o of n big o theta omega whatever you want notation you use anything commonly we use big o so this is big o of n so if you remember the procedure for creating a heap creating a heap so creating a heap was n log n big o of n log n right but this is heapify heapify procedure is order of n so this is faster now what is the minimum time taken for creating a heap big o of n using heapify so that's all about heapify now the last thing is what are priority queues it's a simple topic so i will finish with that one next we will see priority queues now priority queue priority queue so actually q means fifo but priority q means it's not fifo strictly the elements will have priority and they are inserted and deleted based on the priority right so always if in a queue when you want to delete always we want highest priority element from the queue the element having the highest priority that should be deleted for so this is the discipline of priority queue elements are inserted with their priority when you delete we want higher priority element so let us see what does it mean by higher priority see these are the numbers what is the priority of a number number itself is the priority okay here in our example number itself is the priority there are other example of priority queues also like in operating system also there is a concept of priority queue it is not same as that one this priority queue is mostly used in algorithms right so let us see what is the priority 8 is the priority of 8 6 is the priority of 6 so 10 is the priority of 10 so that number itself is the priority then who is higher priority i can say that smaller number higher priority so which is highest priority this one then this one right then this one yes smaller the number higher the priority so 3 is of highest priority here so if i delete i want 3 from the array then otherwise even i can say that larger the number higher priority i can say this also so larger number higher priority so who is having higher priority 10 then 9 then 8 so yes when i want delete i should get 10 from that one so this is about priority queue elements they value itself as priority and there are two methods of giving priority smaller number higher priority or larger number higher priority okay now let us see how to insert and delete see in an array if i want to insert suppose i have one more element simply i can insert after this one then I, when i want to delete from the this type of priority queue i want a three then four how much time it takes for deleting an element from an array order of n because if i am deleting three i should shift the rest of the elements rest of the elements i should shift so it takes order of n time so if you implement priority queue just using normal array then the time for insert or delete may be order of n so i don't want to discuss in detail you can study it by yourself means you can analyze by yourself if you say no i want to keep them sorted order then for sorting also it takes time again for deletion or insertion you have to spend order of n time then what is the better method 
heap which takes how much time log n time for insertion and log n time for deletion so yes heap is a best data structure for implementing priority queue so if you have smaller number higher priority then create a min heap if you have larger number higher priority then use max heap same set of numbers i have created already created a min heap already created max heap so for one element insertion how much time it takes log n right then one element deletion how much time it takes log n so this is the best data structure which works faster otherwise if you use normal array like this then insertion may take order of n time maybe deletion is faster otherwise deletion will take order of n time and insertion may be faster any one of the operation will definitely take order of n time but in heap the time taken is log n so heap is a faster data structure for implementing priority so that's all about priority queue so priority queue can be implemented using heap so either min heap or max heap if you want always smaller number min heap if you want always larger number max heap so that's all in this video and uh, if you want to take the course you can check in the description and you can buy the course for c plus plus and data structure subject there are two different courses right so go through the course see the contents and then you decide that's all